I think I finally understand the Trinity. Uh, what are you doing? I'm gonna pour the entire ocean into this hole. Impossible! You can't fit the ocean into that tiny little hole. And you can't fit the Trinity into your tiny little brain. <laughs> well played, God. Well played. Today we'll be talking about one of the most mysterious teachings of the Catholic faith. The Trinity. When I say God, what's the first image that pops into your head? An old guy with a beard. Special skill laying down the law on a mountaintop. Well, God certainly showed himself to the Jewish people as lawgiver. But Catholics believe there's more to God than that. The Trinity is a way of describing who God is. Catholics believe that God is three tri-persons in one. Unity. Tri-unity. Trinity. Well, Catholics believe that God officially has no gender and encompasses both masculinity and femininity, we call the persons of the Trinity the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because those are the terms Jesus used. He referred to the God of the Jewish people as his Father and even went a step further by saying, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And referring to himself as the Son, not just a Son. And he gave the Holy Spirit to his disciples by breathing on them, describing him as a helper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One God I get. Multiple gods I get. Trinity from the Matrix I get. But are you trying to say Catholics worship a God with multiple personality disorder? <laughs> no. The Trinity is not one person with some sort of disorder, but three persons eternally and timelessly joined in a loving communion. A scripture tells us God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. As the great Christian evangelist C.S. Lewis once pointed out in his book, Mere Christianity, if God is love, then he can't be a single individual alone. For God to be love, he must bear within himself a community of persons. There must be at least a lover and a beloved and the love between them. Even though Jesus had an earthly life where he was born and died, Catholics believe that he was part of the Trinity before time even existed. So the Father loves the Son eternally, without beginning or end. And the Son, the Beloved, loves the Father back with complete generosity. And the love with which they love each other is its own person, the Holy Spirit. And don't worry if you don't fully get it. It's taken centuries to figure out how to even speak about the Trinity. First, God revealed himself to the Jewish people. But it took a while before they were ready to go from our God is an awesome God among the gods of the nations to God revealing that he is the one God. I am who am, being itself, goodness itself. And it took God himself coming to earth as a human being for the church to get a sense of the deeper mystery at the heart of God. God is one community. Not just one person. Right, not a lonely divinity wielding incredible cosmic power and isolation persons in relationship. Oh, that's still not clear. That's why Catholics have come up with tons of metaphors over the centuries. The early church fathers used the image of a cosmic divine dance. St. Patrick used a shamrock. Others have used the images of water, ice, and steam, or parts of an egg, or even the idea of God as author inserting mm. himself as a character in a story he's writing. And these are all somewhat helpful, but inadequate. All of them fail to fully explain how the Trinity are three in one, which Catholics believe will always be a mystery. And there's a lesson to be learned from the mystery itself. In his fullness, God is beyond all human comprehension, more vast than what we can know. Any name or image is only an attempt to explain or understand him. But even though it's hard to wrap your mind around, the Trinity is actually the heart of the Catholic faith. Catholics start out their lives as Catholics by being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Not names. According to Jesus' specific instructions. Then throughout life, Catholics invoke the Trinity during every sacrament and each time they make the sign of the cross. Okay, but sorry, why does it matter how many persons there are? One of the benefits is that it gives us multiple points of access to come to know and love God. For example, even if it's hard for you to relate to God as Father, you can build a relationship with the same divine essence through Jesus. And ultimately, the Trinity teaches us something concrete about what love is and how we can love better in our everyday lives. Loving like the Trinity isn't natural for us. It's actually supernatural. We can't do it without God's grace. But we can get all of God's grace and God himself through the sacraments. Once we're drawing on that divine life and love, we can offer that love back to God and to our neighbor. 
That means living the responsibilities and bearing the burdens of our daily lives with radical love. We can all strive to go above and beyond for our friends and our family, to be loving and kind even when we don't feel like it. Thanks for watching Catholic Central. I'm Kai. And I'm Libby. Check out our website at catholiccentral.com and subscribe to us on YouTube. Until next time, love like the Father, live like the Son, and trust in the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.